Our team coverage of the afternoon storms continue now as a large tree fell on top of a home on Clark Street. That's in the Elmwood area of Columbia. Luckily, no one was there at the time. Our Michael Fuller spoke to the homeowners a short time ago. So we're on the 2200 block of Clark Street, and as you could see behind me, a massive tree came down onto this house. The owner says that it happened around 430, 445. Fortunately, they were not home, but when they arrived home around 5, um, they could see that this massive tree was on their house. You can see this side uh, of the home is almost destroyed pretty much. I mean, it took down the front porch, um, and it also took down this side of the home. The other side uh, wasn't really touched, but there's so much kind of behind there that you cannot see because this tree is blocking this area also went into the neighbor's yard um, but here with me are the owners and guys tell me you all got home uh, as you said around five something o'clock I mean tell me what was it like when you found that this happened oh we had well as I mentioned to you earlier I was on my way out of the office because of the tree the storm and I had missed a call from my ring doorbell, and when I went back to check it, I noticed that the fire department was there trying to find out if anybody was home, and I could see in the background that the tree had fallen. So I, I called my wife and told her, and I said, okay, I'm heading to the house. So when I got here, I knew which tree it was, but I didn't know it was gonna be this extensive. So the, the city's coming out, to, you know, it's, a, it's in a city island. They'll come out, they'll take care of t uh, cutting it down, and then we'll, yeah, our insurance company will start their yeah. process. Yeah, and just yeah. very briefly, I mean, when I pulled up, I could see that, you know, you guys were assessing the damage, but you were just thankful that oh, you weren't thankful. in the house. We are very thankful. Yeah. Nobody was home, nobody was hurt, and yeah. it doesn't look like Missed our little li that. lending library, yeah, our so library, we like that. So we're <laughs> yeah, it's happy fine. about that. Yeah, it's fine. And all of our neighbors about, and uh, uh, Councilman uh, Davis has come, come by, and he's taking care of some, some some clearing done for us. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah, and our neighbors are helping out, so it's fine. We're good. Absolutely, we're good. Thanks. Well, folks here again, they're just thankful that no one was in the house, um, but still assessing the damage as a tree has come down here on Clark Street. Reporting here in Columbia, I'm Michael Fuller. All right, Michael, thank you so much. Now let's go to Assembly and Calhoun Streets. Rush hour traffic was pretty bad this afternoon. These storms rolled through right before the rush hour, knocking a tree down there. That's where we find our Lauren Thomas at this hour. Lauren, is the tree still on the street tonight? Well, progress has been made, JR. They're on their way, though. As you can see, the tree still on the tree or on the street here on assembly in between Calhoun and Richland streets. And this area is still blocked off as they're continuing to uh, to cut this tree and then put it in the trucks so that they can haul it off and clear this area up. But they're making progress over here. But again, there's still a lot more work to be done. There are two trucks now out here uh, that are uh, helping to uh, remove this tree now in their efforts. But again, they're um, they're on their way, well on their way, trying to trying to get this tree cleared up. Again, this there was no one injured as a result of this tree falling in uh, the middle of Assembly Street, but it did take up all three lanes of Assembly Street heading towards Gervais Street into downtown into the Vista. So if you were coming this way and wondered why traffic was stopped and you had to find an alternate route, this is why this large tree here on Assembly Street fell down in the middle of three lanes of traffic here. So again, they're working their way to uh, to clear this area up. Hopefully they'll have it cleared up pretty soon here. They've been out here, the, these guys on these trucks have been out here since about 530. So again, it's taking some time, but they're hoping to get it cleaned up soon. All right, Lauren Thomas live on the scene. Thank you so much. I'm going to bring in our chief meteorologist, Efren Afonte now. Efren, I'm kind of curious how strong those winds were this afternoon. Strong enough, obviously, to blow a lot of trees down and cause a whole lot of damage. Yeah, and in fact, we had one report from the williams Bryce Stadium. Although it was over the press box, the maximum sustained winds was 79 miles an hour. And shortly after 2 o'clock, we started seeing the storms blossom in Saluda, Newberry County. And then it was just from that point on, for the next five hours, the storms just raced through all of the Midlands. And while we were tracking all these storms here in the Weather Center, meteorologist Danielle Miller was watching all these storms. And with the damage that's been reporting in Danielle, there was a lot of reports just in the Midlands alone.
Yeah, talk about widespread wind damage with winds gusting upwards of 70, 79 miles per hour. You're really going to see a lot. And you can see that here on this map. Thunderstorm wind damage reports currently 53 of them here in the Midlands and wind gust damage reports about 11 right now. And we expect that number to go up as we get more reports later on in the afternoon. So let's go through a couple of them. We've seen a lot of reports in those crazy images of downed trees over Newbury, Newberry. I should say we had a report of a downed tree at Interstate 26 and 80 eastbound over in Lexington. Again, social media has been a big part in helping finding these reports. We had more downed trees and downed power lines. People are still out of power. Over in Kershaw near Camden Airport, multiple downed trees. In Orangeburg, a gust of 64 miles per hour. So when we send these warnings out on Twitter, Facebook, or we break into television shows, it's for good warning. We have lots of damage coming in. And finally, I mentioned this earlier, we had a camper blown over from these winds. So really a serious situation with all these winds. But are we still dealing with them right now, Efren? Well, considering the fact that the storms continue to move through the area, the good news is that all the storms are now only in eastern Orangeburg County. A couple of showers of moderate or heavy rainfall in Clarendon County, but I mean in, uh, in Ports of Clarendon, Calhoun County, but that's it. Severe thunderstorm mornings are now down in the low country, and the great news is other than that, we only have a few severe thunderstorm watches in Orangeburg and Clarendon County. It expires at 10, but I, I suspect that'll be canceling soon. All the showers